Hello Stats fans and welcome to Go Figure, ESPN Crick Info's series of micro feature films about cricket statistics. They said it shouldn't be done in film, but humble beginnings friends. Even Steven Spielberg began by playing with toy dinosaurs in the bath and then a few years later Jurassic Park. So give it time. Look out Orson Welles. Or was it Alan Wells? I can't remember. Anyway, I'm Andy Zaltzman. I'm in London, the ancestral home of cricket statistics. And joining me from Bangalore, it's Crick Info's Mozart of Maths, S. Rajesh. Hi, Andy. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks, uh, Rajesh. How are things in Bangalore? Pretty good. It's not snowing out here. All right. It's snowing here, and it's been snowing statistics in the cricket world. What can you tell us about uh, this week's number, which is, of course, 171? Uh, yes, of course, uh, this week's number is 171. Uh, England were at their benevolent best again, Andy, and uh, they allowed Hamish Rutherford 171 on debut. Pretty good score for a debutant, and especially good deb uh, score on debut if, if you're a Rutherford, because I'm sure you'll remember his dad, a certain Ken Rutherford, yeah. and uh, I guess you'd remember how much he scored in on his debut. Well, it was approximately... Uh... 171 less than the Hamish scored, and he had two cracks as well. But he, to be fair to him, he was playing against quite a tidy West Indian team, and I think he was run out in the second innings. Without facing a ball. Well, I mean, that's, that's harsh, isn't it? That, I mean, that's, it's, it's very harsh. Yeah. But, but Do you know how much he scored in his entire first series? His, his sequence uh, read 0040215. Uh, zero, zero, which sounds like a premium rate phone number, but uh, it was uh, yeah. So if you if you get his average, it was one point seven one in his debut series. So you, you can imagine a dinner time conversation between son and father. It's son going. Uh, is it true that you scored your average in your debut series was exactly one percent of the total runs I made in my debut innings? If you were dad, how would you respond to that? Well, I'd tell him he's not getting any Christmas presents. Well, that's, that's just basic parenting, isn't it? Um, but it's uh, 171, by coincidence, also the number of people who are still awake and paying attention uh, in the entire universe by the close of day five of the Dunedin Test match after the uh, abomination of a pitch had euthanasiated the match into oblivion. I don't even know if that is a word, but it certainly uh, should be. What else can you tell us about, uh, about 171? Well, 171, uh, there's a partnership between uh, Ian Botham and Bob Taylor. Remember the 1980 Golden Jubilee Test, India versus England in Mumbai? Uh, just a little before my time. I'm aware of it, though. I've, uh, yeah, but I, I, I missed that. Yeah, sadly. A little before my time as well. But but you remember that big partnership when uh, when Botham and Taylor came together at, at 58 for 5, no less. Yeah. And, they put, and they put on exactly 171. And do you know how they managed so many? It was because of Vishwanath's benevolence and his generosity. Right. When he had Bob Taylor, when he was given out and Vishy called him back, Botham went on to score 100, took 13 wickets in the match. And in fact, that score of 58 for 5 is the third lowest score from which a six-wicket partnership of 150 or more has been ever posted in tests. So, That's good stat. Good and, stat and the right second highest partnership in that innings was 24. So 171 against 24 is is a fair difference, yeah, and that was contribution. certainly in the context. Contribution, yeah, completely turned the match around, and you know who won. Yes, of course, tattooed on all Englishmen's hearts that uh, that famous Test match, particularly Ian Botham, who had a I think 13 wickets and a century in a game when, in which no other batsman scored 50. Now, uh, interestingly, uh, Hamish Rutherford's 171 was only the second score of 171. In the history of Test cricket, the previous one was by Ian Redpath uh, of the Baggy Greens uh, in an Ashes Test in 1970-71. And um, until Rutherford's innings, 171 was the only score below 200 that had only been scored once in Test history. In fact, every score below 171 had been scored at least 10 times. So there's clearly something about the number 171 that puts batsmen in an almost hypnotic state of total undismissible confidence. Maybe something about it being a, a palindromic number that just lulls them into this just sense of total, total dominance. Um, in fact, every other score under 190 has been scored at least five times. So it's, um, it's an extraordinarily rare 
rare number, and um, also averaging 1.71 in a debut series. I don't think that's ever been done either. Yeah, it, it's 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 even lower than Chris Martin's batting average. So, um, <laughs> and and <laughs> since you mentioned the Perth match where Redpath scored 171, do you know who made his test debut in that game? Um, I don't offhand. Was it Bob Willis? It was Drake Chapel. All right. All right. Who scored 108 on debut? Good player. Which also adds up to nine, as does 171. <laughs> I think that might be stretching the, the goal figure uh, premise a little far. The uh, lowest score only to have been scored once in a test match is now 218, uh, which Sanjay Mandraka is the only man ever to score 218 in a test. And the lowest test score oh. never to have been scored is 229. So there's a little piece of cricket history waiting for some ambitious uh, numerically obsessed batsman out there. I think Mohamed Ashraful will get that in the next test. <laughs> Possibly. Um, 171 also is the number of episodes of the hit US TV series Mission Impossible, um, by the end of which the title must have been wearing a little bit thin and regular viewers must have been thinking, no, I reckon this is mission definitely achievable. And the same thing sort of happened with second innings rear guards, I think, as we saw England comfortably hold out for a draw in Dunedin. And, you know, it used to take a real effort to save a game in those circumstances. But now pitches kind of often anti-deteriorate. They kind of get better as the games go on. And the, I'm sad that the currency of the heroic rear guard has been seriously devalued. Um, but if you think the last two days of the Dunedin test were not the most exciting... Try travelling back in time to 1953 in the Auckland Test match in March of that year, in which New Zealand batted 171 overs and scored 245 runs in their first innings in the second test of a two-match series in which they were 1-0 down. That is seizing the initiative like a baby squid seizes a nuclear submarine. Uh, any other uh, any other 171s you can uh, you can throw in our direction? Yep, Glenn Turner and 171 not out against that fearsome bowling attack. The highest, uh, it was the highest ODI score for a long time. And right. the, the, the first score of more than 150 ever in, uh, in ODIs. You know which bowling attack I'm talking about, of course. Uh, this, uh, was it a World Cup? Was it against East Africa or something like that in the World Cup? Yep, exactly, against East Africa. Well, to score 171 against half a continent, that's, uh, I don't know, you can't take that away from the lad. And had he played the whole continent, you know how much he would have scored. <laughs> well, presumably half of that. I don't know, 85 and a half. Um, <laughs> or maybe twice as many. The, uh, the second test in the England-New Zealand series is going to be England's 171st since the beginning of the Duncan Fletcher era on their tour to South Africa in 99-2000. Uh, um, in that time, the 170 tests they've now played, uh, they've won 75 uh, lost 48 and drawn 47, whereas in their previous 170 tests, going back to July 1983, they'd only won 36 and lost 71 and drawn 63. So I think as England fans, we should really appreciate the uh, the times that we're living in. I'm sure we should. Well, I'm, I'm not saying you're an England fan, Rajesh. I know you're a numbers fan and a cricket fan more than anything. Yep, completely. But another 171 coming up. We go back to the Kolkata test of uh, 2001. Do you know how much India scored in their first innings? Uh, I'm, ge I'm guessing from the way you've set up this question, it was 171. I think you're damn clever, Andy. You're damn clever. <laughs> it's exactly, exactly 171. And there have been only four instances of uh, teams which have won a test match after being bowled out for 171 in, in any of their first three innings. I presume if you get bowled out for 171 in your fourth innings, you're not going to win the test match. And do you know India is the only team which has won a test match scoring 171 twice? There are several other teams which haven't even done it once. <laughs> so, I mean, do you think this is... Which is which the team which... Uh, against which team did uh, India score 171 and win the second time? The first one was, of course, Australia in Kolkata 2001. I, 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 I mean, you have stumped me there, Rajesh, to be honest. And there's a common link to both those uh, test matches. Was it Australia again? <laughs> Uh, no, it wasn't Australia. It was it was West Indies in, in Kingston in 2006 when India won their first series in the Caribbean after 1971. And it was again, it was a low scoring match in which uh, India scored, what, 200 and 171 in their two innings. 
and uh, West Indies were bowled out for 103 and 219. But the, but the common thread here was uh, Dravid. He scored 180 in that uh, 2001 match. And here in Kingston, again, he, he scored more than 50 in both innings, 81 and 68. So if you take his match average in these two matches, do you know how much it is? Uh, is it 171? Unfortunately, sometimes ah. stats don't fit in quite ah. so neatly as you want them to. It's close. It's 177, actually. Right. right. Could, Can't argue with that. Yeah, that. Someone should have told him. Right. <laughs> also, and yeah. a Sachin stat on 171, since we, again, like Chris Martin, we have to have Sachin in, in every episode. The number of international hundreds scored by Sachin Tendulkar and Ricky Ponting put together. 171. 100 by Sachin and 71 by Ponting. Um, do you think it'll ever get beyond 171? I think perhaps Cook and Rutherford. <laughs> um, now back to the uh, the Sri Lanka Bangladesh test that we uh, just touched on very briefly earlier on. Uh, We're recording at the close of day four. There, the match aggregate in the Gaul Test is uh, 1,324 for 15 wickets, meaning that with a day to go and a draw, almost completely certain. 171 is the number of shots of espresso that you'll probably need to make it through the final day's play without dropping off for a cheeky snooze. Well, I think we've probably uh, dredged as much as we can out of this this glorious, glorious number, 171. Any final 171s to throw in, Rajesh? Absolutely not. All right. <laughs> Do you have any, Andy? Well, I can tell you that it is... Uh, uh, Article 171 of the Penal Code of Brazil defines the crime of estelionato, defrauding the unwary. And um, perhaps the pitches in Dunedin and Gaul uh, could be done on that charge, basically pretending to be proper test match cricket pitch. What's the punishment for that? Uh, I, I don't know. Hopefully um, be given some grass seed and t told to use it on the pitch and maybe shown a video of a, of a game when the bowlers can get something out of it. Anyway, that's it for 171. Thanks again to uh, S. Rajesh in Bangalore. Signing off until the next time we do Battle with Numbers. I'm Andy Zaltzman in London. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.